So the characteristics that you can see in a perfect living master, even in a physical body, in a physical being, are so unique and so different from everybody that it tells us that he has reached some stage which is not governed by the mind. And that's exactly what it is. He's not operating from the mind. He uses the mind as needed. He can use the mind to develop language and talk to us. He can use the mind to give us an argument or an explanation. He can use the mind for communication with us. He, but he is not used by the mind. The mind doesn't tell him what to do. He tells the mind what to do, which we are all supposed to do. The mind was not given to us to tell us what to do. The mind was given to us, we could instruct the mind what to think, what to do. It's become the opposite. Today the mind is guiding us what to do. <laughs> not only that, we have reached a point, we are being guided so continuously by the mind, we think we are the mind. People say, I'm thinking, that's what me, that's me thinking. We don't think, we make our minds think. But we don't separate ourselves. We don't realize we are consciousness per se, the ability to be aware. And we are using a machine installed in our consciousness called the mind, which thinks. We don't realize that our consciousness makes the mind think. And therefore, we should use the mind to think what we want it to think. Not go by what it wants to think on its own and we follow it. Well, that's what's gone wrong. We put the cart before the horse. We should have put the... The, ourself as the director, as the, as the pusher to tell the mind what to do. And not that mind keeps on thinking and telling us what to do and we keep on blindly following, not knowing enough what the mind is saying. Mind has inadequate information on its hands. Most of it is sunk into the subconscious of the mind and the mind puts up some little pieces, has little information and gives a direction, do this, and we start doing it. The mind comes up, oh, I didn't know that. And we say, oh, sorry, we made a mistake, another karma. What kind of life is that? A life led by our mind is not the life that was intended for us. We didn't come into this world for that. We came in this world equipped with the best equipment to have a great time. We had the equipment of a thinking mind which could communicate, which could reason, which could make sense of things if whenever we want. We came equipped with a mind that could create sense perceptions. And we could then divide our perception into seeing, touching, tasting, smelling. We came into this world equipped to the physical body in which those senses could be embedded and they would operate as if they had belonged to this body. What else did we need to have an adventure? What else did we need to have any kind of experience? Any show could be held with these means we were given, these tools we were given. And what did we do? Instead of having the adventure with these, we began to misidentify ourselves. First, we thought the mind was ourselves. The mind thinks and we say, I think so. I and mind became one. Terrible mistake. Then we said, these senses are mine. I am seeing. These are my eyes to see. Terrible mistake. And equipment, glasses given to us to operate, we calling them ourselves. Then on top of it, a temporary cover a temporary cover of a physical body given to us just to have a physical experience in a materially created physical experience of a world. We said, this is me. This is my only me, my physical body. We made three big blunders. The blunders of misidentification with covers upon ourselves which were designed to give an experience and we began to think they are ourselves. And ourselves sitting inside giving power to all these three, the life force, the consciousness, the soul, the spirit, which was inside, which created and ran these three things, is lost inside. We don't even know who we are. And we think these covers are ourselves. And even when we lose these covers, the internal cover becomes our real self. How will you get out of it? If there was no perfect living master to tell us these are all covers upon ourselves, if there was no perfect living master, we could never get out from it. I can't imagine any way that our thinking could have ever taken us out because thinking would have kept us within the domain of the mind. And all these three levels of experience are being created by the mind. Therefore, we were in bad trouble, but we got the key. 
Thank God some of us brought a key. And those who brought the key, that we don't want to get trapped in case there is a trap there. And there was a trap. And we said, we have the key. The key was the appearance during this experience in the physical world of a perfect living master in our life. That was the key. And the perfect living master came, developed love, and we pulled by his love more than by his teaching. We first thought it was a teaching because the teaching was addressed to our mind. All teachings are addressed to the mind. We thought the teaching was good, very perfect, looks good. The mind was drawn towards it. And therefore the mind was partially taken away from the distractions of the world toward the teachings. And then there was feeling there's something more going on behind these teachings. And then gradually, gradually we discovered it was not the teaching that were pulling us. It was love, an unconditional, pure, spiritual love of a master that was pulling us. And there was nothing like it we had experienced before. And that love alone pulled us back. Now, how can love pull us back above the mind? I want to tell you this. The mind has its own functions. And the soul that performs some functions entirely on its own without using the mind and without using anything else. The functions that the mind uses are sensing, which means picking up the sense perceptions of the seeing, touching, tasting, smelling, these sense perceptions. It picks up and then it makes sense of them. Because if it doesn't make sense, if you saw this yellow color here, they don't become flowers unless the mind makes them flowers. As a perception, as a visual perception, these flowers sitting on the table are merely blob of yellow color in certain shapes. How do they become flowers? The mind makes them flowers. So there's a one function, very important function. It gives meaning to our visual and other perceptions. All the sense perceptions, it converts them into meaningful things and they become meaningful things for our thoughts. Then we can think about all these things which the mind senses. So the second thing it does, which it does continuously, is thinking. It can think in words, mostly it thinks in words, and sometimes it thinks in images, but it thinks all the time. The thinking of the mind is so important, it's like the heartbeat of the physical body. If the heartbeat stops, the physical body stops functioning. Similarly, if the thinking stops in the mind, the mind stops and then everything falls below it. So therefore the mind will think continuously. And what does it think about? It thinks about the perceptions it has picked up and made sense of. Then the third function of the mind is to draw conclusions logically. The logic is the third function. Uh, because of this and this, now this is the result. So it does deductive logic and inductive logic. Deductive logic is he said, oh, this is one yellow flower, the other one behind must be yellow flower, so it's yellow. I see all of them are yellow. This one was also yellow. That's deductive logic. That means I see something big and I know the part is also like that. That's the definition of deductive logic. It also does inductive logic that the wall is white and I can't see that part, but it must be white. And there, that's inductive logic. Inductive logic, logic has uncertainty in it. You can never be certain. Deductive logic gives us no new information. So we are working with the same information over and over again, and that's a function of the mind, and the mind keeps us very busy in that. These three functions all take place in time and space. You cannot think even a single thought, even the smallest thought, without time. You cannot have any image without time and space. You cannot have any deductions except from the senses which are in time and space. The total functioning of the mind is confined to time, space, and cause and effect. It doesn't go beyond that. Now there is something that happens beyond these three. And that happens straight in our soul, in our spirit. One is love. Love doesn't come by thinking. Love comes from the soul, directly. It comes all the time. It comes automatically. The mind throws it back, throws, kills it. The mind kills the love, doesn't create it. You can think and say, oh, is it real? Is it unreal, this feeling I had? But the feeling of love is not coming from the mind at all. It's coming directly from the soul. Beauty. We can see 
These are flowers. The mind can say these are flowers, but the mind cannot say they are beautiful flowers unless the soul says they are beautiful flowers. So there are some functions which are purely, and to be able to see beauty, you do not need time and space. Beauty by itself is a spiritual function. Love is a spiritual function. When you feel love for somebody, you don't say, it took me three minutes or three seconds to feel the love. Love is instantaneous. It doesn't need time and space. Beauty doesn't take time and space. Intuition, a gut feeling, intuitive knowledge does not take time and space. It's not a mental function, spiritual function. So just like the mind has three functions, the soul has its own three functions and they're separate. When I came to this country, people used to just mix up mind and soul as if it's the same thing. They say, you know, whatever this conscious thing, the mind, soul, whatever you call it, they would talk to me like that. I say, how can you mix up the mind and the soul? They are so different. One operates in time, the other does not. One operates within certain big limitations, the other is free. How can you mix them up? But they, they, they had no idea. Even we have no idea. We have ourselves thinking we are the mind. We've forgotten we are the soul and the soul is functioning. It's functioning all the time. It doesn't function when you go to a higher plane of consciousness. It's functioning now. It's functioning in the physical body. You have experience of love. You have experience of intuition. You have experience of beauty right here, every day. And yet you also experience of rationalizing, thinking, making sense every day. We are doing these things through these machines which are installed in our consciousness every day. But when you function from the soul, love is one of those things which come directly from there. A perfect living master operates from the soul. His main method of taking us back home is not the teaching. His method is love. He'll draw you with, with his love. Eventually you'll find that what pulls you beyond your mind is the love that he is extending to you which you've never experienced before because it's pure, spiritual, and very powerful. That's what it is. That's what to do. The mind was given to us. We could instruct the mind what to think, what to do. It's become the opposite. Today the mind is guiding us what to do. <laughs> Not only that, we have reached a point, we are being guided so continuously by the mind, we think we are. So the characteristics that you can see in a perfect living master, even in a physical body, in a physical being, are so unique and so different from everybody that it tells us that he has reached some stage which is not the mind. People say, I'm thinking, that's what me, that's me thinking. We don't think, we make our minds think, but we don't separate ourselves. We don't realize we are consciousness per se, the ability to nation. He can use the mind for communication with us. But he is not used by the mind. The mind doesn't tell him what to do. He tells the mind what to do, which we are all supposed to do. The mind was not given to us to tell us it is not governed by the mind. And that's exactly what it is. He's not operating from the mind. He uses the mind as needed. He can use the mind to develop language and talk to us. He can use the mind to give us an argument or an explanation.